Well, good evening, Elkview family. It's so good that you've tuned in this evening to hear Pastor Charles as he brings the latest in the series of his studies on portraits in faith as he deals with the life of Samson. Today has been a beautiful day. God's blessings have been really great upon our lives. We have so much to be thankful for today. God's good all the time. We know that. But as we come together tonight, we're thinking about those in our church family who may be struggling, some that are not able to come to church because of the virus or still not feeling comfortable about getting out. And we are hopeful that this service tonight will be a blessing to each one that tunes in. Keep, uh, keep praying for the sick and afflicted, uh, those who are having difficulties financially and otherwise. And please uh, stay in tune with us through the Sunday service as well. Uh, Sunday morning Bible study at 9 o'clock for adult uh, classes. And you're welcome to that. And of course our 1030 service with worship, music, and message. So b before Pastor Charles comes tonight, we want to mention some prayer requests. Uh, Brother Ed Soprani, many of you have been following him and his uh, struggles right now, but here's the latest report we have concerning him. He is still in the ICU on a ventilator. Uh, his kidneys continue to not be functioning well, so make that a matter of prayer if you would. Uh, lab work is uh, still out on that, so hopefully the last, next report will show him much improved. Uh, Tammy Huddleston reports on her father, Dennis Lucas. He's still recovering from the fall. He's back in the nursing facility. Uh, family are not able to visit because of the virus. And uh, Tammy's mother-in-law, Linda Huddleston, is recovering from heart bypass surgery. Uh, Brother Bill Queen's father, Jim, is recovering from a fall. Uh, all those who are working in the hospitals, we want to keep them in our prayers, in the nursing homes and so forth, who deal with the care of those who are sick with the virus. And certainly those in the hospital that are dealing with the virus as well, doctors and nurses and staff, we want to remember them. So uh, let's join our hearts together in prayer today that the Lord will bless. And we also want to remember all our seniors that are not able to be out to church. Keep them in your prayers. Our student ministry uh, under the leadership of Brother uh, Josh is moving forward. We're thankful for him being on, on staff now. And uh, keep him in your prayers as he's leading the work there and the youth are responding and so let's uh, let's pray much about that also uh, we want to pray for our, our church leaders as they will be meeting with the engineers who've been working on the uh, site plan uh, on the hill for the new facilities there they'll be meeting before too long on that so keep that in your heart and a matter of prayer as well so at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, your name is holy, our Lord. Your name is above every name. May the name of our Lord be praised. May the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be exalted in our hearts today. Oh, Father, how thankful we are for your daily grace and mercy. How we need you, Lord, every day more than life. You are our life. You give us life and all the blessings and all the goodness that you bestow upon us. We rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory because of your goodness toward us. We are your children, Father. And as your servant John wrote, it has not yet appeared uh, what we shall be, but we know that when we see him, we shall be like him, 
for we shall see him as he is. Lord, what a blessed hope we have in Christ. Now, Father, as we come to the time of Bible study and worship and your word, we want to thank you for our pastor. We ask you to bless Pastor Charles. He's studied hard, Lord, we know, and he's prepared well. But we pray that your spirit will bless his delivery, bless his recall of the things he's studied, and may the Bible study be fruitful in our lives. May we grow in grace and knowledge of our Savior. And Father, as we pray for the sick tonight, we would remember Brother Edsel and his wife Phyllis and their family. We pray for him tonight, Lord. You know his health needs. You know his condition. Uh, you know what he's been through already. And we pray, Father, for healing in his body. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon him to bless him and to restore him, Lord. That is our prayer, and it is for your glory that we ask this petition. We also pray for Tammy's father, Dennis, uh, and for John's mother, uh, Linda. We ask you to bless them, give them healing as well. Brother Bill's father, Jim, and of course, Lord, the many wonderful people who are working to take care of those who have been suffering from this dread disease. Lord, our lives are in your hands. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. And Lord, we're yours to do with as you see fit. So help us not to be too fussy about this world, not too concerned with the things of this world that we're living in. But help us to realize, Father, that you have a purpose in every life. You're leading us today and you're leading us tonight and you're guiding our church family. And Lord, we pray for all our pastors, for Pastor Charles, Pastor Hank, Pastor Josh, and we ask you, Lord, to bless them exceedingly. Lord, just give them wisdom and guidance as they seek to lead this church forward for your glory. Lord, that's all we seek. We want you to be glorified in everything that's done here. We want your name to be exalted and glorified through the saving of souls and through the discipling of your people. Oh, help us to be more involved in, in the work of creating new disciples and teaching them to follow you. So Lord, we pray for those who are absent uh, because they've chosen to go another way. We pray that you would bring them back, Father. Bring them back into the services. Lord, we know that everything is taken care of and we can worship uh, safely without any uh, problem with, with uh, spreading this disease. We can come together and worship and fellowship you with you and with one another. And Lord, we just pray that those who have been fearful might begin to be more uh, confident and that they might come soon. We miss them, Father, and we pray for them. And now, Father, we do ask you a special blessing upon this Bible study tonight. May it reach out not just to our church family, but Lord, may there be others who will tune in and hear the message and that your spirit will bring conviction and faith to their lives as well. Lord, we need our lives changed. We need our lives drawn to you. We need our, we need our minds renewed and our, our wills brought into, con, into agreement with your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, may your spirit lead us and may we find grace and mercy in the time of need. Thank you so much for your love for us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray in his holy name. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Charles. Come. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Curry. So appreciate your prayer. And good evening. I invite you to open your Bibles to Judges chapter 15 tonight. As we continue Portraits of Faith and we look at Samson, who was mentioned, in Faith Hall of Fame in Hebrews chapter 11 and we scratch our heads a little bit and, and realize there's many, many things in Samson's life that seem to conflict 
what we would call a life of faith. I want to encourage you tonight with this. You will never understand God's use of Samson until you accept his sovereign purpose as he stated it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give Israel a promised land. And I told you last week that God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 that the cup of iniquities of the Amorites that occupied the promised land is not yet full. God told that to Abraham. But in Joshua chapter 1, God was speaking to Joshua and he said, the cup is full and I will drive them out and what I do not drive out, you must remove. You must slaughter. So that was the commission that God had given Israel, the 12 tribes, to occupy the promised land because in their establishing that nation, God would displace evil, he would put it away, and God would bring the Messiah to the world, Jesus Christ. But sadly, instead of the 12 tribes occupying the land, at the first sign of resistance, Israel began to allow encroachment on the tribes of Dan and Benjamin and Judah. And these three tribes' lands were being encroached and occupied by the Philistines. This was all happening during Samson's day. So God raised up a warrior. You know, this man, Samson, he killed a lion barehanded. He slew 30 Philistines. And then it says in chapter 14 that he caught 30 jackals or foxes, depending on the translation you're using. But in the Hebrew of that day, the exact word was translated both ways. It could have been jackals, could have been foxes. Seems more likely to have been jackals. They lived, um, they weren't so uh, much of a solitude animal and they would have been much easier to have got uh, what we call uh, packs of them. And he caught those jackals and sent them through the fields with torches to their tails. Indeed, Samson was an impressive man, but he was not all he could be in God's eyes. And tonight, I want to walk you through as we, he's still a man that had faith. Um, not an impressive leader, an impressive man of strength, a man with arrogance that in midlife turned to obstinacy, but finally, total abandonment of his life to the purpose of following God's will. Now, if you'll walk along with me, we'll begin in chapter 15, verse 11. <clears throat> I just want to remind you of the very dark mindset of the tribes of Israel. The only army they mounted during the 40-year Philistine encroachment on three tribes' territories, the only army they mounted during that time was against their own man, Samson. Notice in verse 11. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What a sad commentary for God's chosen people. Instead of God Almighty the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has called us and given us this land and, and he will fight our battles for us. Instead of that mindset, they have a godless, purposeless, faithless culture that's developed in Israel. Where is the purpose of expecting the Messiah and realizing we have to do the hard work of preparing the nation and occupying the borders 
and the Messiah will come. What a sad state of affairs that Israel had decided to take the path of least resistance and, and just cohabitate with the enemy rather than let God deal through them with the enemy. Now, have you noticed um, Samson goes to work in engaging the Philistines and God was using Samson's uh, impulsiveness to actually deal with the Philistines that needed to be pushed back. Notice, <clears throat> after a great battle, and Samson now took the jawbone of a donkey, and he slew a thousand Philistines. After that battle, I want you to notice what happens in verse 18. Then Samson became very thirsty. So he cried out to the Lord and said, you have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now I shall die of thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out, and he drank, and his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore he called its name in Hekor, which is in Levi to this day, or Lehi. And he judged Israel 20 years in the days of the Philistines. You know, I see something here, a principle that works in a person's life. Anyone who is trying to walk with the Lord and live a life of faith, I see a principle here. Whenever you incur a great triumph, a, a, a trial soon follows thereafter. Have you ever noticed that? You might be on the mountaintop one day, but in the morning, you're having a trial. And here, Samson has just slew 1,000 Philistines. But he is brought to remember, I'm not going to be able to drag myself off this battlefield if I don't get a need met. Something as basic as thirst. Now, friends... I would say to you <clears throat> that triumphs are balanced with trials so often in our life because there is a, so much of a danger of our pride and our self-confidence. And um, it's a great reminder that we are just desperately daily dependent on our Father and on the inviting Spirit of God. You know, what a sad thing. God split the earth and gave Samson refreshing water. When God's provisions do not produce greater humility and greater maturity in your life, watch out. You are prime for chastening. Because God quenched Samson's thirst. But we don't really see an increase of humility and an increase of spiritual maturity in his life. Would you notice another chapter of Samson's faith journey? Chapter 16, verse 1. Now Samson went to Gaza, and he saw a harlot there and went into her. Oh my goodness. I did not come to find the answer. I wonder how long between the battle and, and the great triumph of a thousand Philistines and going into Gaza to the harlot. I wonder what kind of time distance there was there. What kind of um, time span. I'll tell you one thing we can see. Samson did God's work by day, but he disobeyed the Lord's commandments by night. The scripture tells us in the New Testament that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so it is with Samson. I wonder, my friend, how much greater impact Samson's life would have conveyed had he learned to, before God, let God conquer him first before he conquered others. I remind you of this verse Proverbs 25, 28, it says, 
Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Man, I hope that verse grabs you and speaks to you. Because it is God's plan for every disciple of Christ that that we would be conquered and subdued by his sweet spirit first. And that through sweet surrender, we would conquer ourselves before we go out to fight the Lord's battles. I wonder how much more impact Samson would have had. Well, let's continue on. I say Samson's in the Faith Hall of Fame and we have more dastardly deeds than we do great moments of triumph. Aren't you glad for the grace of God that he uses our lives in his sovereign plan but I would like not to be used in spite of myself. Oh may God give us a heart that truly wants to grow in the fruits of the fruit of the sweet spirit. Chapter 16, verse 17, we find that very famous story um, of Delilah. And uh, Samson is there and he's sharing uh, too much with Delilah. And I want to point out something, verse 17. That Samson told her all his heart and said to her, no razor has ever come in upon my head. For I've been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me. And I shall become weak and be like any other man. I just want to make a quick point here. I don't know if there's a young person watching this or not. I don't know if there's a middle-aged person contemplating marriage or remarriage. But I want to draw an analogy to you. Who you share your heart with impacts your future. Samson shared his heart. Spiritual spiritual things with the pagan woman Delilah who had no interest in spiritual matters. Who you share your heart with impacts your future. And so it was for Samson. He shared the secret of his strength. And because of it, his head was shorn. The locks of his hair was cut off. And that produced the breaking of his Nazarite vow. The final part of it was broken. He had broken previous parts. He didn't regard what was sacred entrusted to him. And now we find him without strength notice with me verse number 20 chapter 16 verse 20 and Delilah said to Samson the Philistines are upon you Samson so he awoke from his sleep and said I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free but he did not know that the Lord had departed from him What a commentary to wake up and not realize that the Lord wasn't with you. That's becoming pretty numb to the things of God. Now I know we're in a different dispensation and the Spirit of God never, never departs from us. But we can so quench and so grieve Him I wonder how many Christians listening tonight, I wonder how many who aren't tuned in tonight, have yielded to the flesh so much that they have less of a sense of sensitivity to the Holy Spirit today than they did at some earlier time in their life. Oh my friends, we are cautioned, do not grieve the Spirit of the Lord. Do not quench His work in our life. It is sad to wake up and realize that I have no sensitivity left. I've been quenching God's spirit. Oh, he'll never depart from you in a salvation way. But he withdraws his fullest presence 
and power and blessing in our life so we can function and do kingdom work. Oh, if that's your scenario, if you are under conviction and you know, there I have um, gone out without the Lord upon me. I would encourage you. The Lord's still giving you breath. He's giving you time. Return. Confess our quenching and grieving the Spirit. And um, let Him take control of our lives once again. Now, let's continue. In verse number 21, we find a sad scene of sin finally enslaves. At first, sin is... Um, it is proclaimed to be um, enlightenment. It is proclaimed to be something that frees us. We have freedom to do what we want with our own bodies. And, but eventually, sin enslaves. And Samson's story sure reminds us of that. Look at verse 21. Then the Philistines took Samson and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. I think about Samson's eyes early in his 20s. Back in chapter 15 at the start of the chapter, remember his eyes saw a Philistine girl. And that's all he could think about was what his eyes saw. And then tonight we looked at chapter 16, the beginning of the chapter. His eyes saw a harlot in Gaza. And that's all that guided his thinking at that point. You know, the one who had lived according to the lust of the eyes has now lost his vision. In a spiritual sense, that's what happens, my friends. When we are controlled by the lust of the eyes, there's a constant eroding away at the spiritual vision. And Samson has now lost his eyes. Sad story. And yet he made it into the Faith Hall of Fame. Remember, we've been learning that <clears throat> different patriarchs and different people in the Bible made it into Hebrews 11. Some of them, their lives are characterized by lifelong submission to the Lord, a life of faith. Others lived a season of many years of strong demonstration of faith. And then others are more like Samson, where there's punctuated times where there were great acts of faith, but great inconsistency all in between. I wonder what the Father would will for all of us. Oh, I can tell you, my friend, Jesus said, whosoever will may come. He said, follow me and I will make you. And that's exactly what he desires. A daily following and letting him make us into his image. I want to be used not in spite of myself, but in cooperation with God's fullest blessing. Look now at verse 23. And I want to show you something that just as amazes me. The Philistines, the lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, our God has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. They have put his eyes out. They have bound him. He is down walking in circles with the grinding wheel. And he has become a slave. And the Philistines bring him into a great hall and a great assembly where thousands have gathered. And they're praising their false god that Samson has been delivered. You, here, here's, here's my point. They never could imagine the grace of Almighty God. Surely, Samson is never going to hear from God again. Never. Now, this should make an impression on us. God hears every one of his children even from the muck and the mire, 
when the heart is broken and contrite. I suspect as Samson made his laps around that grinding wheel, he had a many a day to cry out to God in repentance and to humble his heart. So the, the Philistines were quite confident that God had abandoned Samson never to listen to him again. Now notice please verse 28 and we'll be done very, very quickly here. You know, we only have two times recorded in all of Scripture that Samson prayed. Once he was thirsty and um, the Lord answered, met his need. And this time, Samson prays, verse 28. Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my eyes. So he cries out to God. Would you strengthen me? Lord, remember me. Verse 29. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple. And he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. And the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Well, Samson had seen this temple many times. He understood its design. He knew about those two pillars that would collapse down on the seating below and bring the seating from above down to the, the earth. And 3,000 Philistines died on that day. I don't know what you're thinking right now. Samson's listed in the Faith Hall of Fame. I think there are many unnamed people referred to at the end of Hebrews chapter 11. It says, the world was not worthy of them because they suffered great afflictions and great persecutions. And there are many, many unnamed persons that are referred to in Hebrews 11. And so it is today. The Lord is not unjust to forget our labor of love and to forget our faithful walk. But as we contemplate Samson's vacillation back and forth and his punctuated acts of faith, may our Father stir within us. Let's learn what we can from Samson's example that God's sovereign purposes will be accomplished and he'll use our lives even in spite of ourselves. Well, how much sweeter to walk in close fellowship every day. Would you bow with me in prayer? Our Father, we've reminded ourselves of Samson's youthful arrogance, of the obstinacy of his middle age. And we are reminded and grateful that you do not leave us alone. Thank you for continuing to work in our lives and humble us to the place that you get the glory and that our lives can have kingdom impact. And thank you for Samson's faith that led him to total abandonment to be used of you. Help us tonight to learn quickly humility. Help us tonight to serve with abandonment for years to come. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for watching tonight. And God willing, we'll see you Sunday morning. Good night.